Welcome to Daedalus U. I'm Paul, coming to you from Brooklyn. Today we're going to take a look at pyramids and slant height wackiness out of good old McDougal Little's geometry textbook. So go ahead and open up to page 483. We're in chapter 12. I'm going to read Theorem 12.3 first. The lateral area of a regular pyramid equals half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. All right, so I've written that equation up here on the big board. The lateral area of a pyramid. So here's a pyramid. You see it over here on the big board. Equals one half the perimeter of the base. Well, the, the perimeter of a base in the question we're going to do is just the, the, the perimeter of this square. So, you know, we just want to ultimately know what this side length is. We can multiply that by four, and we'll have the perimeter of the base uh, uh, times the slant height. Now, this is the slant height. We're going to do all slant height in wacky orange. All right. This here, bam, is your slant height. All right. Not to be confused with this here in red, this line, I'll point to this one here, bam, which is called your lateral, lateral edge. Right, so we want to we want to get these clear here today. That's your lateral edge, and then to make matters even more confusing, we have here good old height, right? So we'll label that here, good old regular height of the pyramid. So uh, let's just quickly now read theorem twelve four, which is for the volume of a pyramid. The volume of the pyramid equals one third the area of the base times the height of the pyramid. You might remember from just the previous video or uh, part of this chapter that the volume of uh, prisms or you know, three-dimensional solids is generally the area of the base times the height. In other words, the area of whatever base we're starting with, triangle, square, trapezoid, times how far we've pulled that, that area into a third dimension. In other words, times the height. Now, because we have a perimeter, we multiply that figure times a third because you know, we're going up to a single point and we've chopped off two-thirds of the original volume. Okay, so let's read number 13. Number 13 says, sketch each pyramid described, then find its lateral area, total area, and volume. We're just going to do one question here today. We're going to do number 13. So it says the height is 12. Well, that's rather generous. It's giving us the height. So this height here, I'll write H, equals 12. And then it gives us a slant height, also generous. Again, we're going to try to stay color coordinated here today. The slant height, which is denoted by a cursive L, is 13. All right, maybe we've got enough. Let's get started. We want to solve for the lateral area. Well, I just mentioned that the lateral area is equal to, and I'll duck out of the video here, one half P times L. All right, well, what is that? That's one half, what's the perimeter of this, of this base? Hmm, unfortunately, we don't have that perimeter. We don't have that side length, right? So let's, let's take a close look now at the, at the triangles involved in a, a pyramid, or in this case, a, a square-based pyramid. First, we have this one that's kind of standing up in the center. You can see I've kind of drawn it already. We have the height here. So for our figure, we know that that is 12. And then we have really, we have essentially half of the side length, right? We have this piece right here. I'm going to make it purple now, which, you know, mirrors exactly this half of the, of the S right here. So this would be like S over 2. And I'm going to go ahead and write that that's S over 2 in this triangle, okay? And then the hypotenuse is the slant height. Go back to orange, knock that out, right? And we know that that was 13. Well, simply enough, that means that that's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, which, of course, you should be pretty familiar with. So our side length, our S, that's an S up there. Our S, then, I'll write it right here is 10. Voila, important piece of information. Now, 
we'll go ahead and plug that into the formula, but then I want to come back and show you another triangle that is in here. But let's go ahead first and finish this off. We just found out that our perimeter, well, if the side length is 10, right, then then the perimeter is going to be four times that 10, correct? Because there's four of them. And the slant height, fortunately, we were given 13. You can see that labeled a couple different places. And yeah, I'll go ahead and put that in its orange times 13. So what does that equal? Well, that's 40 inside the parentheses times the half, which is 20. So 20 times 13 is 260. And that would be in, you know, uh, uh, square units. All right, so there's our lateral area. Easy enough. Um, but just before we move on to total area, I want to just point out that there's another triangle here. And I think that this is where pyramids get interesting and, frankly, sometimes confusing. And you'll need to really know this for other questions. Notice how right here we have another S over 2, right? We have another 5 and that that's a leg of a triangle that's kind of on the lateral side here and I'm gonna go ahead and spin that triangle on its back and write it right here right so that is the slant height so the slant height here is 13 and then the other leg of it is this 5 right that is half of a side length. And then look what turns out. It turns out that this, then this, this is the hypotenuse. I'm going to kind of trace it over here. And that's the lateral edge. Right? And so the lateral edge ends up being the square root of those two numbers squared. 13 squared plus 5 squared. So I've tried to color coordinate this so that you see the two different triangles involved in a, a pyramid, a square pyramid. You see this, this one, which is the, the, the height and then half of a side as the legs with the slant height being the hypotenuse. Remember, these are right triangles. It's important. Put those little right guys in there. And then on the face, on the... Uh, well, on the face here, on the lateral face, we have another triangle. Let's kind of shade that one real quick. Right, which then when we kind of flip on its back, we have the slant height is, is a leg, and half of a side of the base is another leg, and then the lateral edge ends up being, you know, the square root of 13 squared plus 5 squared. So we're going to go ahead and move on with the total area, but I wanted you to be really visually familiar with those two different triangles that are always at work in a square pyramid uh, because we could have been given the lateral edge. In fact, in the very next question, uh, or number 14, we're given the, the lateral edge as 17 and we have to sort of solve back for the, the lateral area, total area, and volume and so forth. But let's go ahead forward now with this one. The total area, as we know, is uh, just the lateral area, which we already have is 260 plus the area of the base. Uh, this one's kind of a no-brainer. You know, if you go in this order, you just pick up what you've finished before. We, ha we have the lateral area is 260. Plus, well, what's the area of the base? We know that the side is 10, and then it's a square, so it's 10 squared. So 260 plus 100, we're at 360. And again, we'll just make it up that it's meters so that we see our units are squared when we're doing area. And lastly, the volume. Well, the volume we know now is one-third... Pick the formula up from right over here on the big board. One third times the area of the base, which we just saw for in the, in the total area, times the height. Now that height is this 12 here. So that equals one third. I'll write it out here as, I'll write it as 100. We just solved it. It's 10 squared times, I'm going to go ahead and throw this 12 in blue so that we kind of see where that 12 came from. Times that 12, right? So not, don't confuse this height with this slant height. And lastly, back to magenta. Uh, I'll do the, the 12 divided by 3, get a 4. 4 times 100 is 400 in our meters cubed, because volumes are always in cubic units. And voila, there you have it. The lateral area, total area, and volume of a 
a regular square pyramid with particular attention paid to those uh, uh, two right triangles in square pyramids that are oh so crucial for solving for area and volume. All right, as always, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the future.